What's up, I'm Troubleshoot, let's speak optimizing Rainbow Stick Siege for the best competitive edge. Let's do it. Before we begin, this video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your system. This video is only really going to focus on in-game options, so let's get into it. Alright, so I'm hopping straight into game. I'll head into settings in the top right, then options, and in here, I'll run through some non-graphics things first, just for a competitive edge. On the first screen, I'd recommend enabling a display performance metrics to advanced so you'll get some nice blocks down the bottom left telling you about your FPS, ping, and some other useful things, but minimal might be a bit better for you. It only shows ping and FPS without those graphs next to it. Stun VFX, definitely set this to dark glare for dark flashbangs. Tinnitus SFX, which is the ringing when flashbangs and things like that go off, I'd recommend muted here just so your game gets a little quieter instead of a high pitched ringing noise. However, wave is pretty cool too. Cycle inside camera groups, I have this on usually. Drone after prep, automatic, closes your drone when the preparation phase finishes, but you can also set this to semi or completely manual to leave it only when you want, which is pretty useful. On the HUD tab, everything is your preference, of course, whether you're an experienced player or not. Ping locations and things like that can help you. And there's a huge amount of customization that can be done here, so go through this in your own time and get rid of HUD clutter as you see fit. The more experienced of a player you are, the more things you might want to turn off just so you can see things without more visual noise. On the audio tab, here I'd definitely recommend dynamic range. Change this to night mode so explosions are quieter and footsteps are louder. The dynamic range is smaller or tighter. Tinnitus SFX we already covered. Muted is what I like here. In-game SFX, 100% in-game music, zero for a competitive edge, your preference though. Menu SFX and music, your preference, usually I have it something like this. Voiceover volume, which is the in-game speaking, also you'd probably want this quite a bit quieter, if not off completely if you're an experienced player. If you do want to have it on, you can change the voiceover presets to keep it to either all of the flavor adding voiceovers or gameplay focused, team focused, minimal. Minimal is usually what I'd set it to, but of course, Team focus, like enemies being spotted, traps being placed, can be super useful. On the display tab, there's a couple of important things here. First of all, resolution should definitely match your display. So if you're playing at 2K, set this to 2K, 4K, 4K, etc. And display mode, usually I'd recommend playing full screen for the best input latency, but personally, I alt tab quite a bit. And if I alt tab while the game is launching, things like that, it can crash quite a bit. So borderless is usually what I go to here. Refresh rate should match your monitor aspect rate ratio is your preference. VSync definitely off all the time for the best input latency, but you can enable it if you're getting screen tearing, FPS limit. Also, I have this as off usually, but you can cap your FPS here. Field of view, entirely your preference. Usually I'd have this quite a bit higher. And if you'd like your HUD to be closer to the center of your screen, you can lower these options here, making it so you don't have to look so far away from whatever you're focusing on in the dead center, which can be a competitive advantage. I'll apply here and you can see how things are more focused towards the center of your screen. Obviously, the menu display area might not be something you want to lower, but it is something you can change here. For me, just the HUD display area is the option I'd want to change. On the graphics tab here, we can get some serious performance out of our system. First of all, if you're on an NVIDIA system, I definitely recommend turning on NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. If you've got a really slow CPU, set it to On Plus Boost. For the overall quality, obviously change this to best match your system. I'll work from wherever we are and customize things from there. Texture quality, definitely set this based on however much VRAM you have available in your system. You'll see a bar at the bottom right, as well as your total and currently used, or well, will be used once you're in game, and set your texture quality to match based on that. You don't want to use all of your VRAM, as that'll cause stuttering and weird things like that, as textures are swapped in and out of memory on your graphics card, so set your option accordingly to what we have here. For me, I have way more than 7 gigs of VRAM in my graphics cards, leaving this all the way up gives me a much better looking game at absolutely no FPS cost. Texture VRAM limit limits dynamic loading while you're playing the game. I'd recommend dropping this all the way down to the lowest option, just for the fewest hitches and stutters, things like that, especially important, I would assume, if you're on a much slower hard drive or SSD. Texture filtering shouldn't really matter too much on most systems, but you can lower this if you wish. For me, I don't see any difference performance-wise, but texture quality-wise, they should, at least hypothetically, at least on paper, be a improvement in how textures look. 
Then scrolling down, LOD quality, usually in the past you'd have to have this set higher to see things further out. I usually just leave this up, but that's your preference. Lowering this should hypothetically give you better performance, especially if you're much more crunched for VRAM. Me, I have more than enough, so it shouldn't really matter here. Shading quality, I'd usually leave this on low for the best performance. Shadow quality, however, I'd recommend leaving up just so you can see players and things like that moving a bit more crisply and more correctly, which is especially important for getting an advantage before someone swings and peaks, etc. So high, if not very high, is a good choice here. Reflection quality obviously doesn't matter too much. It's a competitive FPS. Low is fine. VFX quality, again, low is fine here. Ambient occlusion has to do with soft shadows and things like that. Doesn't really matter. I'll set this to off. Lens effects, obviously off here. The less we have cluttering our screen, so bloom and lens flares, the easier we can see other players. Things like that. Off is a competitive advantage. And zoom in depth of field. Personally, I like the guns that I'm holding to not be blurry when I'm scoped in, but this is your preference. Then all the way at the bottom, we have upscalers. We've got DLSS's full name here. Not sure why they had to use the full legal name on this, but obviously we've got the usual culprits of NVIDIA DLSS and AMD FSR 1 and 2. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, definitely use NVIDIA DLSS if you need extra performance. Start off on quality, see if it gives you the FPS you're looking for, move to balance, otherwise anything higher than this, especially on 1080p or lower displays, might give you a more visual artifacty type gameplay where things are blurrier, smearier, and might be a bit more distracting for a competitive game, it's usually best to play with as little upscaling as possible. That's true for AMD FSR or anything else for that matter. If you're going to be using AMD FSR, definitely use AMD FSR 2. The same thing goes for all of your settings there. Anti-aliasing I'd recommend turning off for the best performance here. Then adaptive render scaling target, leave this at zero. If you choose to enable this, it'll try and change your resolution while you're playing the game to keep you at a solid 60 or 90 FPS, things like that, whatever you push this to here. But by doing so, when certain actions happen in game, like explosions, etc., and your FPS happens to drop, it'll dynamically change your resolution. And it may be especially distracting if you're hyper-focused on a certain area, things like that. Off is the best here. Render scaling, 100%. And obviously, if you're using upscaling at all, most of these options here will be blurred out for you. If you don't really know what you're doing, you can leave NVIDIA DLSS on auto or FSR 2.0 on ultra quality, and that should be fine for a small boost in performance with minimal visual cost. And with that, we've covered pretty much everything. Controls, entirely your preference. Privacy, same thing here. Accessibility, of course. Here you can do things like turning off motion blur if you wish. Could be useful for you, especially if you have motion sickness. These two options here, stun VFX and tinnitus, we've already covered. You can change your optic color here to work better with you. Scrolling down, same thing for team colors. And you can change your chat scale here if you wish for messages to be smaller and less intrusive, things like that. Also, not to mention I skipped over this screen shake. I'd recommend off here for the least distractions while you're actually trying to focus and play the game. But yeah, with that, we've covered absolutely everything you need to know in the in-game graphics options, which should net us a big improvement in performance. And with that, we've covered pretty much everything that we need to know to get the most performance out of our system. If you'd like to customize a few more things inside of the game configuration file, here's how you do it. Hold start and press E or the Windows key and E to bring up a new file browser, head across to Documents, and once more into the My Games folder. Then Rainbow Six Siege, followed by your user ID, whether it's Ubisoft Connect or Steam, and then GameSettings.ini. We'll open this with a text editor like Notepad. You can just double click on the file and it should open here. Inside of the settings file here, there's a couple of things that you might want to change. Your FPS limit here, you can punch in a more fine-tuned number, so 144, 240, 320, or 60, or whatever you're running, you can punch that in here, and it should match your display without making your graphics card work way harder than it should have with an FPS limit of zero or uncapped, which is especially important if you're trying to stream, record, and OBS and things like that is lagging, YouTube and browser is lagging, Discord, etc. Here you can cap your FPS in a more fine-tuned way than scrolling down here, not necessarily to do with the video option, but you can customize a few of them here if you wish. Same thing in custom quality. If we scroll to the input section here, you'll find mass sensitivity multiplier unit. By default, it's 0.02, but if you'd like to customize your sensitivity in game, even more finally, add an extra zero at the start here. So it's 0.002 or even 0.001, and you'll get some really fine control for your mass sensitivity in-game. Finally, at the very bottom, 
somewhere here. There we go. You'll see data center hint. By default, it's default. And here you can change it from default to play fab forward slash followed by a region. Pulling up a Reddit post here by Nebtix, you can see the different regions default for automatic. We've got East, US, Central, South, Central, West, Brazil, etc. And there's a few different options here that you can use. Simply punch that in here. So Central, US, for example, and you should now be playing on the Central US servers instead of your own ones. If you wish to play with someone outside of the country on the different side of your country, etc., you'll be playing on their servers. If you punch it in here, I'll just leave it at default and that's fine. And with that, we've customized pretty much everything we can to get the most out of this game, FPS wise and gameplay wise. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.